Okay, we've got the bottom is covered, shrunk, we've got our fittings on. What we're going to do now is start marking our glue lines for the top fabric skin. Well, as long as the wing's upside down, we might as well do that. We're going to take our pencil, we're going to come back, we want a good inch to an inch and a quarter overlap here. What I try to maintain on this width right here is the same width that we have on the trailing edge of the wing. And we'll do our overlap glue joint is going to come around over about into this area here. And again, just for to have a reference to go by, I just like to make me a pencil mark. It gives me an idea of where I'm going to glue to. And around the wing tip bow here, we're going to have the same thing. We're not going to go quite so far on this because we don't have to go very far to have our full one inch wrap on the glue joint here. And if you don't go real wide on this, it makes it real easy to cover the edge of this when you start putting the finishing tape on around the wing tip. So again, this is just a reference line to give us a target to glue to. Kind of come right on up around the edge of the nav light fitting there. Right on down. And again, I use my fingers for a guide. If you're more comfortable, you can take a compass, put a pencil in it, and mark it off with that. Okay, that's got that mark. We're going to go ahead and turn the wing over now, and we'll lay our fabric on the top, and then figure where our overlap is going to be on here, and mark it, and then we'll go ahead and glue the perimeters like we did for the bottom, and glue the top fabric down. Okay, we're ready to start marking our perimeters. We've already pre-marked around here. Now, we want to, this is a glued overlap, so we'd like to maintain a minimum of a three inch overlap. We've got a tape measure. So we've already got our bottom tape in place. We might as well just use that as a reference. So I'm gonna go from the six inch mark here to the three inch mark, which is right here. We're gonna come down here to the other end of the wing. And we're gonna do the same thing. Again, we want a good three inch overlap. So we'll go to right here. We're going to go ahead and mark this on the leading edge. Now what we can do is just take a good straight edge and lay on there and just make a pencil mark. Then we're automatically set up to go ahead and lay our fabric in. This will be the overlap line right to here. This is a good glued fabric to fabric overlap joint. Once this is all shrunk and ironed into here, it'll be bonded all the way around, but we get a real strong joint here. Then after that's done, right on this seam, we'll center a four inch tape, which gives us a two inch overlap on each side of this. And that really ties the front of the, that fabric together at the leading edge. Okay, we got our three inch overlap. All I've got here is a long piece of aluminum that I use for Actually, I've had this for a number of years, use it to lay out rib stitch lines and straight edges and so forth on here. If you don't have this, you can actually use a chalk line if you prefer. Or you can come along and just mark about every two and a half feet and then use a yardstick to go ahead and get your reference mark here. Any number of ways to do this, they all work equally well. I like this because I can just pretty much do it in one quick pass and it's a done deal. Okay, we've got our marks on. We're just going to go ahead, brush a nice coat of glue on here. Again, like all the other procedures, we're going to let it dry, and then we'll lay the fabric into the glue. And this is going to dry fairly fast, probably within about 7 to 10 minutes. This will be dry to the touch, and we'll be able to lay the fabric into it. Okay, what we want to do here is just get our light, nice little glue line. That's where the fabric's going to wrap around this leading or the uh, wing tip here. Main thing, we get enough glue around here where we get a good solid one inch overlap. Now again, fabric's going on the top. We're not going to glue to the top edge here. We're going to glue to the bottom here so that fabric can pick its own natural line just like we got on these edges here. And we'll glue just about to the edge of the pencil line because that's where we're going to trim the overlap fabric to that line right there. 
There we go. We can go ahead and catch around the edge. The top fabric is going to overlap along the side here in this aileron bay area. We'll go ahead and just glue this area while we're at it. We're going to be coming around, gluing into the false spar area here. Again, we'll just go ahead and brush a good coat of glue into here. And we'll just go ahead and pre-glue everything here. Like we said before, the nice part of this, we're working at our speed. We don't have, we're not a slave to the glue. We just go at the speed we want to go because we let this glue dry and then we can work at our pace. And again, we're gluing around all the perimeters here to the opposite side of the wing that the fabric lays on. This is the bottom side. We're brushing the perimeters on the bottom side of the wing because we're about to attach the glue to the top surface. Once we get that top fabric on, we start the shrinking process. We'll shrink to the 250 degrees. Then we're going to turn the iron up to 300, and then we will iron both sides to 300. And then after that's done, we'll turn the iron on up to 350 degrees, and we'll iron both sides up and bring that up to the 350 degree. Now we're going to come around the butt rib here, put a good coat of glue around here. And here it doesn't hurt to have a surplus of glue in here because often you'll have to do some cutouts in this area. You got the glue there, it's going to help keep that fabric from fraying. Okay, we've got all the perimeter now. Now what we're going to do on this, we're going to paint a good coat of glue on top of the rib and onto this offset lip. This is where the tank cover comes. We need to firmly attach the fabric here. As you can see, there's not a whole lot there to hold that fabric in place. Another thing I'd like to do is come to the bottom side here. Brush a good coat of glue in there so I can get a complete wrap. After I cut that fabric off, we'll go ahead and wrap that fabric and glue it on the, on the bottom side here too. That really enhances the strength because now you've got a glue joint that's pulling in two different directions. That's a very strong glue joint there. Plenty of glue up under that. Same thing, here's where we cut the felt out. We're going to let the fabric come down and glue firmly to this metal tank bay cover area here. You get some glue up on the edge here, it doesn't hurt a thing. It's all going to be bonded down. Catch along this edge. We're going to wrap this fabric all the way down around here. Okay. And the same thing's going to happen here. Where this fabric lay will come up and stop. And that leaves this open bay here for the gas tank. That'll be reinstalled after the fabric is shrunk and we do all the rib stitching. Then the, uh, in fact, probably even after the wing is painted, the gas tank will be reinstalled. Okay, we've gone ahead and our wing's been flipped over. We rolled our top panel of fabric out on this. And uh, again, it's a blanket method. The top's a little easier to do. We don't have the protrusions and so forth on it. We're going to roll the wing up here, drop the trailing edge down. And you know, we've already gone around, we've pre-glued. Here's our pencil line. So this gives us a reference for this leading edge of this top skin to go to. Makes it real easy to get it on and get it lined up nice and straight. Again, we'll just kind of lay it down into, the, into that dried glue that we put on there. Okay. Now, we've got a nice straight layer of fabric here. See it's lightly packed into place. Now we're going to get our small iron again. We're going to heat this edge up right here to nail it down. 
Just those rubbing here to make sure that we've got the Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we don't want this to slip around on us, so we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're just going to clamp this in place with the hot iron here. And we're just doing it about a half inch right along the nose of it here. Right now, the main thing is to just get it nailed down. You can go ahead and work it. Got a little bit of puckers in the fabric there. Put the iron on it, let it shrink them out. Sometimes the fabric will stretch just a little bit when you're working it like this. And just a little time spent here can take a lot of the work to load out of getting a nice finish later on. We're getting all the wrinkles worked out, getting this fabric to lay in really nice and tight. There's right to the end of the leading edge, right there. Transition into the wing tip here. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and flatten the wing out now. And once we're satisfied with what we've got, then we can go ahead and start nailing it down around the edges. Got a little bit of slack right in here. Again, what we can do is a little tension on it. Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. We're going to go ahead, take our scissors and split this right here so we can start pulling this fabric around. This is on the transition here where the nav light's at. And be careful that you don't cut too far into the fabric. If you cut up into here, of course, then you've got a brand new fabric job, you're going to start putting a patch on. Let's pull some, pull that fairly snug around there. See, we can start kind of just tacking that right into that dried glue. And it's going to tend to stay put pretty well. Now that's pulled right around there, makes a nice transition. And it's got it stuck in place there a little bit. That's what we need. Put it on around the tip here. Then you're going to just kind of work it down into these areas of dried glue. If it was real cold and damp, if the fabric didn't want to tack into here like we're doing it by just rubbing it in, you can hold it in place, take your iron and make a little pass and get the same results. Very similar to what we did on the leading edge when we actually tacked it down with the iron. Okay, that's working real well. Okay, we'll get the little heat iron now. Okay, we've got our heat iron. What I'm going to do here is just make a little pass around this edge just so that won't tend to start pulling loose on me when I flip the wing over. You see a little discoloration there. That's where it's starting to actually stick it down fairly tight. See a little glue bond, a little line right around there. That's a good indication that you're getting a good heat bond to that fabric right there. Again, we can pull it loose if we have to. So what I'm trying to do right here, just bond it around the perimeter so when we start to handle it, it's not going to tend to pull loose. When we lay it in by hand, that's a very light tack. Okay, you don't need all the surplus fabric around here now. I'm going to go ahead and trim some of this off of here. Don't get too close. You want to have something to work with when you turn it over. We don't need all that flopping around. Okay, we've got that done. Fabric looks really good through here. I'm going to go ahead and just make a little cut right up to the corner here. A little bit under. Just going to trim this back out of the way here. Now what we're going to do is just pull this up underneath here. Again, we're just lightly tacking it in place. And pull that and actually just kind of rub it in with the finger there. 
slightly tack that in place, and then we've got it so where we want it. I don't want it to move, so I'm just going to put a little heat right there on that edge. Bond it down. Now we've got our center base here. We're going to do, do our cutout here. And then we'll cut right into the corner here. We do the same thing on this end down here. And we can tack that in here. We want it there. Go ahead and cut this out of the way here. And then we'll make our cut here to get the fabric to the into the aileron bay with. And we cut right into the corner. That fabric can lay. In fact, we're going to flip that back up out of the way here. We've got a little bit of a fabric ridge here where we trimmed it. Very easy to get rid of. I want to take the heat iron, just roll that edge over and hit it with the iron. Kind of smooths out the edge of that false bar there on the trailing edge portion of it. Again, there's a lot of things. If you get something like this, very easy to come back when you're laying the fabric on and take care of it. Okay. That will lay into there really nice now. What I'm going to do is go ahead, pull this fabric down. Here, and just kind of tack it into place real quick. That will hold it in place. I'm going to be ready to come back and glue it shortly. Now, before I glue this down, I'm going to actually take this. Looks like we're doing real good here for a lay of fabric. Don't have any bias wrinkles. We'll pull that around. Rub it in slightly. We're not sticking to the top here because we didn't put any glue. We're just going to forcing it around the trailing edge. You can see I can push it up into the glue on the bottom side. There's enough light tack to that to hold that in place. And I'm going to take the iron. Kind of making a good hot pass right along there. Just want to make sure that's you can see it's stuck in there fairly tight right now. Okay. Turn my corners out here. We don't need to come up past this point here. This will pull into place here. Again, slightly tacked. Just go ahead and nail it down here so it doesn't move. Same situation here. We had when we did the bottom surface. We go ahead and cut this off here. And we'll start to kind of nail it down here. We're going to use the iron quite a bit here because we want to try to shrink this end as much as we can. So it'll lay in right around the nose of the leading edge of the wing here. That looks really pretty good there. And we're going to just take the straight cut scissors here on that. There's not a lot of stress on this joint. The time we get our glue on there, that's going to be a good solid bond on that. Go ahead and kind of shrink the wrinkles out of it there. There, looks real nice. We've got here now, again, this is the tank bay area. What I'm going to do is just rub that down into there. I'd like to stick this down to the rib. Again, it's very nice to work with. That's going to stay put, even though we don't have any wet glue actually gluing it down, we're letting our dried glue 
sit there and form the initial bond for us. Get a little pucker here, it's not a problem, just pull it loose, work it out of it. There we've got it. Now again, you really don't want that to move. I'm going to make this little pass with the iron here. That aluminum is pretty good heat sink, so it takes a fair amount of heat to really get that nailed down in there. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely not a certified glue joint, but it's really got that rascal stuck in place quite well. We'll get the rotary pinking shears. And what we'll do is uh, need that soft lead pencil. Make a pencil mark here for target to cut to. We're going to be cutting back about that far. We want that glue on this lip of the leading edge. Again, this kind of gives us a reference line to cut to. Okay, take our rotary shears. You can see that's stuck fairly tight. cut this with straight edge cutters you could do that also. One thing you could do is then go ahead and glue all this down, let glue come out into here before you ever cut this and when the glue dries you can go ahead and cut it with your straight edge scissors and have a nice clean. By doing this I can go ahead and fold this down on that inner edge and when I glue it I'll just glue everything at one time and then I'm done with it. Okay, again, fabric panels like this, they're nice and smooth, take care of them, fold them up and lay them aside, because these are really nice pieces to use for cover patches later on. Okay, we've got our tank bay fabric cut out. We're just going to go ahead and fold these edges down into that glued surface, just like we've done in the past. I'll come around to the other side here, and we're going to do the same thing on the trailing edge. Just kind of pull the little wrinkles out of the fabric there where it's stretched a little bit. And see how nice that is to work where we can push it right down into the right area like that. Now what we're going to do on this, we're going to leave this flap of fabric out. I'm going to brush glue up under the, under the edge. After this is dried, then we're going to tuck it under by hand and get a real strong joint on that. So, and here we've got a little wrinkle in it. Again, nice thing, we just pull it loose, pull the pucker out of it, go ahead and lay it back down. Okay, we'll take the iron now, just nail those edges down, and then we're going to do our final glue joint on this. And just kind of, what we want to do is just kind of stick it enough, clamp it down with the heat, so when we put the wet glue on there, it doesn't try to pull loose. And again, this one's been stuck down pretty good. Get one more thing along there for it. And we'll come to the back edge here on the trailing edge. We're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of nail that down in there. A little bit of heat. Okay. Now, we'll go ahead and glue that. Okay, we're going to get our good glue joint on there now. And to do that, just like we've done before, we're going to brush glue down through the fabric. In this case, we're going to come right on around to here. Want to really rub it down in there pretty tight. Want a real nice tight joint here. Again, we can wipe the surplus off. We don't have any glue ridges or lines that are going to show through our finish. 
Well, what we do is go all the way around this. Again, like I said, when we get to this area here, we'll glue down through here. And I'm going to actually brush glue on the back side of this piece of fabric. We'll let that dry. After it's dry, we're going to just fold it under by hand. And we're going to have a joint there that won't pull loose later on. This has been a weak area <clears throat> on a lot of these Piper type wings. I find a lot of them, the solvent glues will tend to harden up and dry out, and this area will start to pop loose, and you get some loose fabric through this area. It's not really ever been a problem with this system. Again, there's we're in a closed hanger here. We don't have any fumes or vapors coming off. It's very nice to work with. Same thing, you just rub that and get it down so it penetrates through the fabric. It's down into that glue that we burst on top of the rib earlier. And then we're going to nice little wet coat on the back side here. There we go. And we're going to take this wipe the surplus off. And keep in mind when you lay glue, if you're going to be gluing fabric into that glue joint, you don't wipe it off. If it's a finished area like this, where you're not going to be gluing back over it, go ahead and wipe it. If it's an area where you're going to be putting a tape on later, go ahead and wipe it off. Because you don't want any glue ridges or bumps or drops or anything on there that would show through your tape. So only if you're going to be gluing another fabric skin down to an area where it's actually a bonded joint, carry your air loads and so forth, that you want to leave the glue on without wiping it off first. Okay, what we're doing here now, we've got our three inch overlap. Remember we came along originally and cut right along the edge to hold it in place while we pulled all the wrinkles and stuff out of the fabric and got the perimeters lined up. All we're doing now is just going over this three inch area with the iron, moving it fairly rapidly. We're not trying to shrink the fabric. We're just taking, there's enough heat that if there's little bubbles or slack, it'll actually shrink those out, but we're doing very little actual shrinking on this piece of fabric. If you're not careful, you can pull this edge and get a real crooked edge, and that, those tend to show through the tapes when you're finished. The straighter you can keep them, the nicer this is going to look. What we're doing here, we're just ironing this down. We want to get that really smooth. Now we're going to go ahead and stop here and I'm going to brush the glue into this area here. Gluing our three inch overlap, we had it tacked into that glue that we put on previous. Again, you can see we've brushed it through, we've wiped it off, and again, it's important to wipe that before it dries too much, because if it starts to string, it's going to leave ridges that are going to show through your finish, and this stuff does not sand worth a darn. So, if you do get a spot like that, you can use the erasure, like I showed earlier on those drips, and do a pretty decent job of pulling it off. But it's so easy to prevent that by doing this right here, there's no need to have to put up with that kind of a problem. Okay, the wing's turned over, and we're gluing around the perimeter now. Say this is the bottom, top fabric wraps around. We want a real nice, clean, straight edge here. So what we do, we've laid this into that tacky glue. It's going to draw us a straight edge, or a straight line on here. That gives us a reference mark to cut to. Remember we ironed this edge. It's got stuck down, so we can just pull this fabric loose. It's still attached here. It's not going to go anywhere. We're going to take our rotary cutters. Now we've got us a nice straight line to cut to. So we'll just follow our pencil line here. We're going to cut this excess fabric off. We're going to find this fabric is stretched a little bit while we cut it. That's not a big problem. And just go ahead and lay it back in. You can see it lays right in there quite nicely. We can touch it just slightly with the iron. That'll take any looseness and slackness out of it there. Kind of bonds it into there just a little bit. And then what we can do now is we'll take our glue, we're back into the old 
glue and wipe scenario that we've talked about and done in the past. Brush our glue right down through that joint. As you can see, the beauty of what we've done here, we've got a very nice straight uniform edge here. It's not going to be noticeable under our finished tape when we finish this fabric job. When we come around the wing tip here, we're going to use a little heat on this. This is an inside radius curve here. So as we come around this with the iron, what we're doing is actually shrinking this fabric a little bit. Now what we want to do is come right up into the edge of our glue line that we put on there previously. And see how that fabric shrinks and lays right into there. We're not really doing this by stretching the fabric. We're letting the iron do the work for us. Slightly shrinking that. We're not using any more heat than what it takes to get the amount of shrink here that we want. The same setting I've been using all afternoon. We're probably in the neighborhood of 275 to 300 degrees right now. There we go. This will actually come right up around here, laying quite nicely. Now, as we're doing this, we'll just keep right on going here. We'll start out right up here, the leading edge portion of this. Again, we're going to just kind of hold the fabric. Keep working around the radius of the wing tip here. Let the iron and the heat do the work for us. And just keep shrinking that right into place. You know that lays in there. Start shrinking right on around. All we care about is just up to the edge of our glue line. If it's wrinkled past that, that's not an issue because we'll be cutting that off very shortly anyway. Again, we're letting the heat of the iron here do the work. There we go. A nice straight line into our transition point there. All right, what we'll do now is get our pencil, and again, we're going to mark where we want to make our trim cuts here. And this can be pretty much right along the edge of this original glue line. And again, when we pull this up to cut it, that fabric's going to stretch a little bit. So when we lay it back in, we'll use the heat of the iron again to just lightly take any of the little stretches and puckers out of it. It'll lay in here real nice and smooth, just like we see now. Hold that right on up. And it'll blend right to there. Okay? Now, because we're stuck down pretty tight around these edges here, then we can go in here and pull this stuff loose. Got it back far enough that we can get our rotary cutters in there. Cut the pencil line. And we can pull all this right here loose. Right back to there like that. And stretch that fabric back a little bit. And that's going to work pretty good. And keep the fabric back out of the way. What we're interested in here is our pencil line. I'm going to just follow it with the rotary cutters. It's a little tight bit in here. Scoot that out a little bit. There we go. One thing you don't want to do is let this wing drop off the end of the rotator here. Had that happen, and I can assure you, it does not make the best part of your day. And again, we're going to follow our pencil line here. It doesn't take very much longer to go ahead and do this. A little bit extra time we spend rather than just taking the pair of scissors and just whacking it off it makes a tremendous difference on the quality of the 
fabric job when you're finished with it. Okay, we got that. We'll take the iron now. Again, we'll take the iron here. What we're trying to do is just get all the wrinkles out of that that were stretched into it when we pulled it loose to cut. And we've already shrunk this once. So we got the same heat on the iron, so we're not going to really do any additional shrinking on this. All we're doing is just pulling the puckers out of it. Okay, there's a nice transition on that. Come around here to the other side. Now we got that top skin that wraps around this wingtip bowl. Looks almost like it's been molded into place. A little area there where the got a little wide. I can hold a little heat on that for just a bit, shrink a little bit of that out of there. Yeah, that straightened that out pretty nice. Now we're ready for the our glue and white business again here. Once that's nailed in place, we don't want it to start moving around on us. Got it where we want it. We're going to go ahead and glue it down. And just brush the glue right down through that. Right on around the radius of the tubing a little bit and the wingtip bow. 